Okay, welcome everyone to this panel. This is going to be a very interesting one. It starts with a, a bit of weird question, how much commission should a platform charge? But trust me, it, it's a question which is gonna open many cans of worms, I think. So it's gonna be an interesting one. Uh, I wanna welcome my, my guests. Thank you for being here today. Um, uh, I'm gonna go like, I'm gonna let yourself guys present uh, quickly and uh, the order is what I see on my screen. So if you're, I first see Eric Mason from the United States. Eric, welcome. What are you up to? Thank you. No, it's good to be here and, and actually it's a great topic to, uh, to cover. Uh, a little bit about myself, I've been in and around the uh, short-term rental vacation rental marketplace for quite a long time back uh, from 2006 and forward um, and I've helped build and, and deploy uh, many solutions around the industry. So it, this is just a, a topic near and dear. I think we're all interested in, in how decisions are made around this topic. So I'm looking forward to the conversation. Great, thank you. And then I see Moria down on my left. So go ahead. <laughs> Hi, my name is Maria Rockman from uh, Smiling House. We are an alliance of uh, luxury vacation rental around the world, actually in 26 countries. We're very much focusing on the segment of uh, um, private amazing homes and working with property managers and homeowners and based in Switzerland, we start in the Swiss Alps. Nice. Good to nice. see you and good to see you finally, Luca. Hope uh, we could see each other, all of you soon. Yeah, yeah. Nice. let's hope we can start traveling again soon. David from uh, San Francisco, from Hostfully. Um, what is Hostfully exactly in two words? Hey, Luca. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having Hi. me. Uh, so hostfully we are a software platform for property managers. We have two uh, products actually. One is a platform to make beautiful digital guidebooks and the other is core property management software. So we help you manage all your operations, get you listed directly on a bunch of channels, manage your automated emails, stuff like that. Okay, great. Uh, j just before we start, let me, let me say how I relate to you guys because I don't know personally Eric, but we're working together now on uh, Yes Consulting, which is a new consulting company launched by Eric himself and Richard Bolton. And with Moria, there's, there's, a, there's a history because we met three years ago now at the Incomo at the Vacation Rent Award Summit, where we were very lucky to present trips. And uh, I still remember when Moria, I didn't know it was Moria at the time, but somebody asked a question at Booking.com about payments. I can't remember exactly. What was this question? It was pretty direct, so I it's, remember it's that. It was a question coming from me from the crowd. Yeah. Complaining or asking why you booking, why I cannot work with them. And I made all oh. the heads turned, of course, say, I'm looking for the day I can work with you, booking.com. And the reason why I cannot work with you, unfortunately, it's the fact that uh, the commission that you're taking, plus the fact that you want it to be instantly booking, booked the kind of, 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 of luxury um, uh, vacation rental around the world cannot just work with you. And right after uh, I got like 20 or 30 property managers from different parts of the world came to me and say, you just said what we didn't dare to say for years. And I, I think that this was a big um, moment for Smiling House to understand that uh, we should be kind of an alliance and right after lunch, I came back to Alessandro from uh, Booking.com and told him, you know, it's not my question anymore. It's a question from uh, tens of uh, property managers and owners and probably a budget uh, of all of us a month is, is, is close to a few hundreds of thousands of dollars. You still don't want us to be working with Booking.com? And are you working? The, yeah. the, 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 the question still remains. Oh, so you're still not working with them? No, we can't. And okay, so, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, basically it shows that once a company gets too big, it loses um, flexibility and business in this case. I mean, maybe the best business out there. Uh, it's a weak point. It's a weak point. Uh, we have this feeling that OTAs are like omnipotent. They can do whatever, but it's not true. They're, they have weak spots. And that's one. You, you just go one. I, I could remember you asked about the commission, then it is it's perfect because for this panel, you actually asked that question. Like, well, I guess your question was, 
Yeah. Can I you can you make a lower commission because you? Yeah, you, I ask about the commission and about the fact of uh, of instant booking. But commission, if you think about it, if you think about um, a luxury vacation rental, first of all, this is a traditional vacation rental before the OTAs. People were renting uh, chalets and uh, castles and villas also in the 18th and 19th century. Of course, in the 20th century. This is a traditional uh, vacation uh, rental uh, uh, that ad had to adapt to the OTAs, not the other way around. And with it, this adaptation, um, many of the, of the property managers and the property owners still cannot play a role in the OTAs. And one big reason is the commission. Commission from, um, uh, from, from $1,000 or $100, which is one thing, commission from 20 or 30 or 40 or maybe $100,000 becoming for the client. Another um, few days on spot, another babysitter, another uh, a, a friend that he can invite all over just because of the commission of the OTAs. It makes no You're sense. You're talking about one booking. That, that's the yeah, we're talking about one pay. booking that can get between five and seven or $10,000 that's going on a commission. The commission of the much. OTAs right now is uh, between 15 and 22 percent. Oh, okay, okay. It's funny they don't have a. We, we're gonna get to this later, but it's really funny they don't have a tiered approach to to this kind of of very high ticket bookings. Okay, uh, uh, David, we don't know each other, and uh, we I think we have never met. We have something in common: <laughs> the fact that uh, with Trips we are very close partners to a company in Silic in San Francisco, which is Orange Origin Protocol. And um, do you ever come to Europe? Do you, do you travel to Europe sometimes to these conferences or you're more like based in America? I don't know if you guys would let me come to Europe these days, but uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but, but before that, uh, yes, I've been, I've been a few times. Okay, great. Okay, so let me quickly introduce what we're doing with trips and, and then why we have this question. So uh, as I was mentioning, we are partners with Origin Protocol, which is a San Francisco company, which is building the protocols, uh, the open protocols for the marketplace, for the sharing economy for everything. So with their software, we will all be able to build the next Uber, uh, Airbnb, uh, Amazon, and so on, okay? So we are, we, we are partners with them for the vacation rental vertical. And uh, we already have with them some like uh, app where you can do bookings and reviews, et cetera, it's, it's, it's very basic. When I say Web3, I mean the internet with the blockchain, but I won't get in detail with that. Uh, in very quickly, one important point here is that we have to decide a commission. That's why this question. And uh, we don't need to extract profit from the commission. We need to get the commission to reinvest it in marketing and anything else related to running the platform. So the commission pays for the platform and its marketing. It doesn't pay for its investors, okay? The investors are paid, uh, I mean, they have their return on investment through a different system, which is called tokenization, is related to cryptocurrencies. I won't bother you with that, but just, just get this, basically. We are trying to get as little commission as possible because it makes the platform more valuable. So the question we asked ourselves is, how much? Of course, it's an impossible question to answer because whatever you answer, then you have to try it on the market. But we decided for a 5%. And if we see that we need to charge more, we charge more. If we manage to charge less, we charge less. We're going to try to charge as little as possible. That's the, the main difference with the OTAs, with, which are trying to charge, of course, as much as possible. Another important point, once we launch this uh, what is called governance, the commission will not be decided by me or people in trips. This is going to be decided by the network. The network will be anybody who uses the platform. Uh, it may seem a bit far off, but today there are projects uh, in the decentralized finance space. I don't know if you guys have heard about DeFi. Have you heard this, this term recently? DeFi. Okay, Eric, Eric is nodding. So it's something... There's a lot of um, movement in the cryptocurrency in DeFi today. And there are projects where people vote for 
something like how much commission to get. And the decisions are taken not by the people who brought the protocols, but by the network. So in TRIPS, the commission will be decided by all of us, not with a democratic vote, not uh, with a majority in terms of like um, number of votes, but based on the cryptocurrency you, you, you own. Again, it may sound funny, but it's actually happening and it's gonna happen too. So that's why we need to decide the commission. Um, so that's all about trips. Uh, my question to you guys, and I'm gonna start with, with Eric. 5% commission, what would change if from tomorrow everybody pays 5% in total? I'm talking about not what you as a host pay to Airbnb or, or to booking, but the amount of money which is removed from the, the transaction today, which is about 15 to 20%, even in Airbnb, because the guests pay the, the rest. What will happen if tomorrow we all start paying five instead of 15 or 20? Um, yeah, that, that's the question, basically. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if, if the platform can, can reach and, and, and develop demand, uh, you, you've got a kind of a chicken and the egg thing, obviously, right? So we've got, you know, the ability to, to garner uh, inventory, right? That makes uh, attracting consumers, um, you know, compelling. I, I, you know, I believe a, an offering at 5% would be compelling. You know, the, the bigger questions are, you know, how does it perform in the marketplace, right? Given, given its need to disrupt big spenders, you know, billion dollar advertisers, um, and to drive uh, demand on the platform. Uh, I mean, it, 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 again, anecdotally, you know, it, it seems to be an interesting number, whether it's uh, the right number or not, ultimately you'll, 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 you'll know uh, because uh, users or prospective users will tell you. Uh, but I think, you know, ultimately, you know, I typically approach things with performers and try to figure out, you know, how do I sustain an operation you know, with the amount of money, you know, we, we generate and, and, and the expenses and costs around, you know, driving the business and, and delivering a solution. Uh, but ultimately, you know, the, the consumer slash user uh, will, will define and decide it. Uh, but again, anecdotally, you know, I guess 5% is a good place to start. And uh, yeah, of course, the, the question is, five, five is too little, so you won't be able to make it work. But let's for a, for a second, assume that it works. And, and not, not with trips, but in general, um, what would change today in the industry if the commissions were not, in general, for all of us, for all the portals, were not that amount, but, but, but lower? What, what kind of uh, secondary effects would you imagine? I know it's a hard question, Eric. Sorry about yeah, that. But. It's okay. It's, I mean, this is sort of a brainstorming kind of right. ideation yeah. call, right? Uh, I mean, obviously, I think it would support the health of, of suppliers, aka property managers and hosts, uh, to, to kind of deliver perhaps better service, to focus on growing their portfolio because they're actually, you know, generating more incremental revenue to themselves, right? So, it, it, you know, one of the spinoff effects could very well likely be, hey, I have more profitability, therefore, let me go out and grow my portfolio. Um, and, and, you know, so, so that's just one that comes to mind. Uh, there, there's a lot of angst, as we all know, right, in the marketplace uh, regarding, you know, OTA fees and, and the, the amount that, that is required to drive demand on those platforms. Um, so if, if there's a way to really, you know, garner uh, demand from a platform like TRIPS, um, I think it would be wildly successful. I think this is sort of a, a uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey that you, you'll go through. Um, but I think ultimately, if you put more money in the, in the uh, pockets of, of the supply side, uh, it'll have uh, benefits beyond probably what I can imagine right now. Great. Uh, Moria, you know what, what, what I see as a vision for this? I see a vision where at a certain point, trips, launches, and many other similar OTAs will launch. And, but let's stay on trips. Uh, and you alone could say, okay, I'm going to make a proposal as a member, you know, of the network. And I want to have a very low commission for very high tickets. So, or maybe put, you know, a cap on commissions. 5% is fine, but maximum 3000 euro or whatever. And, and then people would vote for that. Now, suppose that and that's actually what's happening in DeFi. So we're going to get to that point, right? So 
suppose that you could do this, what kind of proposal would you make? Because your interest is also, of course, is to pay less commissions, but it's also for the, the platform to work. So you right. wouldn't ask for a 0%, right? What will be like, you know, your proposal to, the, think, to the network? I think, I think the, um, there should be a cap and I think that uh, percentage should, should go down or there's, uh, there's a cap or percentage should go down according to, to, uh, to the size of the booking, not the other way around. Because if um, um, a booking of $50,000 is happening in the, uh, within the, the platform, uh, the platform should be happy and charge a bit less. The, the less they're charging still probably going to be representing tens of others uh, bookings uh, in the normal ecos ecosystem. From the other hand, um, this kind of, of knowledge will encourage uh, people in, in, the, in the segment of uh, a, a luxury uh, vacation rental to work with the OTA because let's not forget the OTA or the platform is bringing a lot, a lot of value uh, that you cannot compare with working with an Excel and, um, and uh, you know, and some kind of a digital um, um, a diary or something like that. So, you know, a lot of this, uh, the, 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 the situation of today is also um, stopping a lot of uh, property managers and property owners from progressing as a host in the digital way. And like uh, Eric mentioned, maybe to to be able to host a, in a wider portfolio, but also in the service that they're able to give to their client. If they are not digital, they're losing the good sides of the OTAs. That, and about your suggestion that uh, the price um, will be uh, defined by the people who are working within the platform, clients and uh, users, etc. As you know, I'm also a sharing economy specialist and uh, for me it's amazing news and I can tell you one thing, uh, Switzerland, you cannot say it's a sharing economy country, but uh, in Switzerland, one thing from a political point of view, for the last uh, 50, 60 years, every decision is taken by everybody who lives in this country, whoever cares, from moving one tree in, in one city to the biggest major uh, decision. And if a whole country can be, um, um, you know, functioning in such a good way, uh, in this way, I'm sure one OTA can do and maybe the others too. Well, uh, great, great answer. Uh, I, you know, if you really want to see this in action on a completely different, you know, in a market like the, the finance, go and check Compound or Kyber Network, but check Compound. And it was, it's, it's amazing. Go in Twitter or the website and you will see how people in these days are voting exactly these things. And the, the nice thing is that you can vote very complex rules. And these rules, by the way, I didn't mention that, are enforced automatically. So if tomorrow your proposal goes to, okay, max cap 5,000 euro per commission and uh, decreasing commission with rising the commission, you know, like booking price, this can be written in the smart contract and this is automatic. There's no way, there's Amazing. no need for somebody to, okay, well, we changed our mind. No, it's like, it's enforced by, by the software. And it's incredibly powerful. And until six months ago, that was theory. We knew it was going to happen. But today we are seeing it. And it's amazing to see these people are moving. Uh, I think they are moving uh, hundreds of millions of dollars already with this. So check it out if you're curious, because it's a, it's a glimpse in what's going to come. Sure. Great. Um, David, I got a different question for you, which is, you know, you're selling software and services to your customers and they, they buy it if they have money and they, they, they pay a price according to the money they have left. So the operative margin of your um, customers affects your sales and affects what kind of offering you can have. Um, if, like, if they could have a, a lower commission, um, let's say on the 5%, First of all, how much more money would they have to spend on services like yours? And how would this change? I know it seems like a rhetorical question, but no, actually I'm curious to ask, like, is this a problem? The fact that the operating margins are lower than they used to be? And how, how important is that fact in general? 
uh, when when you are you know going into the market how, how do they how, you, how do your customers feel the pressure of of not having too much margin if it's true by the way because it could not be true sure so putting um putting ourselves in the property manager's shoes uh, let's say they have a property that is, for simple math, $100 a night. Uh, they actually don't look at, a lot of our clients, um, don't look at Booking.com being very different from Airbnb in terms of the commission because they're putting on the goggles of the guest and what the guest is paying. So with Booking.com, uh, the guests, they, they would up their price to $115 to be listed on booking.com to pay that 15% commission. On Airbnb, they would make it $103 to pay the 3% the commission, but the guest on Airbnb is being charged around a 12% commission. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. On book, so that brings it up to $115. So the guest is seeing the same price. If you price, if you have a pricing strategy to take into account the commissions, the, the guest is paying $115 on booking.com or on Airbnb. It's the same thing. And you're still getting your $100. Um, so a lot of our clients don't really see a difference uh, between the two. And they're still making the same amount on both. And the guest is paying the same amount on both. Now, here comes something like trips, which is only charging five percent there's a lot of flexibility that the property manager has uh, on their pricing strategy they can still have it be 115 dollars that the guest is paying and now they're getting around 110 109 dollars instead of 100 so all of a sudden trips becomes their favorite platform and they're going to be putting more energy into making sure their listing is good on trips and promoting trips because they want more bookings from there um, or the other option is they still get their face of 100, which is what they need. So it's appearing as 105 on trips. And that's cheaper than the 115 on booking.com and the 115 on, on Airbnb. So now trips is going to be known as the place to get the better deal. Uh, so there's kind of two benefits there. And, and property managers can choose one or the other. Uh, but either way, it works out for, for trips. And there's, you know, there's more money to help them out. Uh, and improves their business as well as a property manager being listed on trips. Would they be able then, like, would they spend more on your services or buy more of your services, or would you be able to offer better ones? Like, once this money is liberated. Yeah, for commissions? those that are for for those that want their price to be the same across the board. So it's it's 115 on Airbnb, 115 on Booking.com, 115 on on trips then they're making more margin, right? Yeah. For every trip's reservation. So that, yes, that absolutely gives them more ability to, to provide more services, to put, use other software to, to make a better experience for the guests. Okay. Um, I, I can tell you one thing yeah. about, our, from, from my side, uh, if, um, if such opportunity will come to reality, uh, I could encourage, you know, we have a lot of upsells and this is also something that is very hard today to uh, to communicate through the OTAs. It can be a chef, and it can be um, um, a pickup, or or babysitting, or or ski lesson, or whatever. And uh, for me, you know, for these kind of people that we are uh, busy with, sometimes the difference of another thousand or two thousand, it's 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 not a big deal. But they do evaluate their money. It means that if the platform will be cheaper and will be able to give them more in the same amount a platform can even can even take some uh some margin from this uh, upsells but uh we're getting a much happier uh, guest and uh, that will uh you know that his vacation will be not only with a beautiful vacation rental but also a real experience that comes to um all you know made in one place and uh this is their desire anyway if if this works the way it should work, uh, you know, if the system manages to price the right commission, uh, then the commission paid will be exactly the commission which your property managers would be happy to pay. In other words, trips wants the bookings to go through trips because it makes the whole platform more valuable. So everybody's going to have more value in their hands, and uh, every time. 
and it doesn't matter if it's high or low because anyway, there's no profit to be made. So if we manage to get the right system, you're going to get what you need. Basically, the market defines the price. While today, the market doesn't really define the price because you as a market, as a, as a, as a provider, were not able to get into a, one of the biggest OTAs who are losing money, basically, on, on your business. So maybe we're going to have a better, a better situation there. Okay. Uh, Eric, uh, what do you think are, what's the situation today with the, with the margins in, in this market? What do you think? from compared to 10 years ago and what's your take on this is it an important subject or not yeah it's always an important subject i mean if you're talking about from the supply side margins yeah you know obviously you know given that they they are likely pricing to the cost that they're bearing right so as as david was saying that you know they'll add incremental cost on top of whatever the base rate they may believe is, is appropriate for a marketer based on what the homeowner or property owner uh, needs. Um, so, so ultimately they, 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 they have some ability to kind of control, at least from a kind of an OTA perspective, um, you know, manage some of the profitability or margin side of it. But ultimately, you know, I think this is kind of gravitating around what we're, we're talking about is, is that if you can deliver guests, um, and, I, and I believe, you know, there's, there's still going to be multiple different channels to acquire guests to, uh, to, the, to the properties uh, directly, you know, from a supplier, uh, supplier site and their own initiatives and marketing initiatives, uh, which is appropriate. And, and we all should be doing that. Uh, and then leveraging the, the appropriate OTAs with the uh, appropriate uh, fee structure. But I mean, margin pressure is constant, right? Because we, you know, we have a lot of a lot of services and a lot of solutions in the market, right? And and they all have potential that are placed to to help drive efficiencies and potentially, you know, more or higher profitability. Uh, sometimes it gets confusing uh, because of the, the sheer amount of stuff that we have to look at. Um, I mean, I'm a I'm a big you know proponent of of doing sort of you know monthly P and L reviews to see you know what we're spending and and where our money's coming from you know, what's appropriate to, to spend on and, and what, what is it driving in terms of uh, guest experience, guest acquisition, uh, and, and ultimately, you know, sort of, you know, uh, impacting our bottom line. Uh, but, you know, again, margin pressure is going to be a reality, regardless, frankly, of what we do here, because there's other costs uh, that are beyond what we're talking about. But it's, it, should be, it should be, frankly, on all of our radar all the time. Okay. Um... I had a question, but I, but I, I lost it. Um, I, I'd love to comment on something uh, Mariah Thank said Thank you, earlier. David. You uh, <laughs> saved with, me. <laughs> with, with regards to the, the upselling uh, of additional services, we're seeing that as a big trend and a big focus on property managers as ways to get additional revenue. Uh, if, as a property manager, uh, if I were a property manager, I'm getting around 20 or 30% and the homeowner is getting the other 70 to 80 percent of the actual rent right. but these additional opportunities of you know a, a chef or ground transportation or groceries pre-arrival uh, or even like a, a mid-state cleaning or an extended checkout oftentimes that's not part of the agreement with the homeowner so the property manager can get 100 percent of the of the profit of that so they are looking not only obviously is it a better experience for the guests to be offered those those services from the property manager and have it be a kind of all-in-one one-stop shop but it's also very lucrative for the property manager to be able to offer that is is this not under pressure from the otas too that they're trying to own that part too and charge a commission on top how, how is this moving lately? Um, a, a little bit, but not really. You don't, you don't see a lot of these additional upsells being done through Airbnb or booking.com after a reservation is made. Uh, so, you know, Airbnb, of course, they have their experiences Experience. thing, but that's different from a mid-state cleaning or an extended checkout or groceries pre-arrival okay. or, or other amenities and benefits like that that can make for a wonderful stay. So that's usually taken offline. Uh, and if there's a way actually for a platform to be able to help support that, the property manager would be all on board with that because it's, sure. again, great additional revenue for them. 
Okay. Because so, if you're yeah, familiar morning. also with the, what Airbnb is, uh, is offering with the experience, it's actually taking you to another host in many cases. Yes. The host of an experience is another host, and then you, the client is like dealing with two different, and especially what David says is the, the services they're given into the house, especially the cleaning ones, and other things that are, you know, belong to the way that the house is functioning and uh, familiarity with, with the house, that uh, makes so much more sense that it will be done through the property manager and through the OTA with the same uh, uh, host. So if, if this is a very good insight, uh, if, if, if you can develop it as a feature, it will answer a big need. Mm -hmm. Yes, what well, we're seeing actually a lot of our clients who get direct bookings on their own website as part of that checkout flow, kind of like when you buy a plane ticket, it asks if you want a rental car as well or a hotel. So uh, we're seeing that happening on the direct sales side. So after they pick a, a property before checkout, they get offered a bunch of different services. Do you want that mid-state cleaning? Do you want the extended checkout? Do you want a, a tour, you know, a horseback tour ride? Uh, and they can include whatever they want in that as part of the, you know, the upsell during the, the checkout process um, or at any point afterwards be between when the guest makes that reservation and um, when they're actually checking in. Uh, so, so if there's a platform that didn't just focus on the reservation, but allowed for property managers to sell other services, that would be a, a big you're difference. You're talking here. about direct bookings, David, right? Uh, I'm talking about direct bookings. Direct so bookings. if there was oh, okay. a platform that also enabled property oh. managers to have those upsell items and right. maybe take a 5% commission on that, um, that, would be, that would be a great differentiator because no platforms are really doing that right now. Uh, actually, it's recent from Airbnb uh, removing the, the email and kind of forbidding you to communicate mm -hmm. out of the booking. So this is this is making upsells more difficult. Is that right? That's that's a big deal. That's huge. They just made that announcement that for right. August, they're going to well, be Well, they're working thing. for us. They're making right. life easier for us. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they're just going a bit too hard um, in a hard moment. So... Um, Okay, I got another question um, to, for, for all of you. Uh, and, and I start by saying what happened in 2017. 2017, there was this big uh, ICO thing in the crypto world where companies raised million dollars in minutes in a completely legal way, by the way, but doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And there were many, many projects where they were selling, doing platforms for bookings with 0% commission. And the, the logic goes, it works because, as I was saying, it's tokenized. So the money comes from another way, from, comes from the token. And, uh, and when we had to decide how much to charge, I said, in this market, when you offer a 0%, you lose credibility immediately because they won't understand tokenization. They're going to think it's free. And when it's free, you know, we've seen booking portals offering 0% commission and they never worked. So we decided 5%. Um, but my question is, how much, you know, how much is too high before it becomes not interesting? So, Eric, uh, let's say that the average is 15 today. If I say, okay, we're going to charge 14, probably say, okay, that doesn't matter. Where is the number we should not go over before we burn this interesting aspect? Because we're going to have pressure to, to make it higher, to get more marketing money, et cetera, right? What is the number? Is that a magic number in your head? No, nah, there's. I, I don't think there's a magic number, but you know, to your original question on there's there's been providers in the past that have come to the market with zero percent fees or zero zero cost. You know, there's always there's always a way or, or or there's a structure that allows the organization to make money. I I, I sort of preach uh, transparency uh, because if if uh, if somebody has a question in their mind about this this can't be real. I was just having this conversation yesterday with another property manager about some things. Then, then why would I trust that is that it's real? So I, you know, I, again, I think if you if you if you come to the market and you have some sort of a, you know, unrealistic fee that is realistic given your business model, just tell the user uh, or or the client, a prospective client, why it's possible and, and how you're how you're making money. I think that works well. I don't believe you know my view, my experience. I, I don't know if there's a magic number, except we've all seen that movie before whereby you know, uh, there's new entrants into the market with a, a lower commission, 
uh, to get users, right? So you gain critical mass. And then uh, over time, you see that sort of uh, bar raised, uh, you know, con con consecutively and consistently. And that's just, you know, that'll just be a turnoff, I believe, over time, I except, you know, let's, let's look at it in terms of, you know, if you're able to drive demand in a, in a meaningful way, um, then there'll be a propensity to uh, be accepting of, of certain incremental costs until it reaches a, a threshold. And again, I'm not sure exactly where that threshold is of, of like, now you're just like the others, right? So why, you know, now why do I choose you over the others? The others likely will maintain some relevancy over time. Um, so anyway, there, there is, there's probably in, in every supplier's mind their own number. Um, and it's hard to get into, uh, you know, millions of suppliers' minds, right? <laughs> okay, good. And to go, to go more, more uh, specific, Maria, uh, how mu what commission would be um, the, in terms, like, let's say the commission cannot be progressive, it's always the same, and let's say there's no cap. Uh, what is a fair commission for your kind of bookings? I, I would like to talk about uh, transparency that Eric mentioned and okay. the other thing that David mentioned that is the, the commission, different commission between the guest and the host. I think okay. uh, one of the things that confusing the most the, um, uh, the guest is the fact that they see the commission on their side and they don't never know uh, what is the difference, but they know that there's a big difference between that and what the host is really is seeing as, uh, as, 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 as the real amount of the booking. So I would say that 5% is an amazing number, but even more amazing is, is the, the kind of the USP, the unique selling proposition saying, we take it equal. So while the property manager or the property owner is sharing two and a half percent, you as a guest also sharing two and a half percent. It's very known, it's very much in the open, you're not going to be able uh, or you have no reason to get out of the system in order to squeeze the property manager or property owner knowing that there's a difference of 15% on their side between what you see as a guest and what they see as a booking. And everybody understand that without 5%, the platform cannot function. So I would say 5% uh, is a great number, dividing it equally between host and, um, and, and, and guest is a great idea that don't make any of them trying to pull it more to their side. And if you want to, uh, to put a lot of uh, uh, the segment of luxury vacation rental, you can also add a cap and that it will be a dream come true. We started with the two five each side, and then to make it simpler and more transparent, we, we decided to change 5%. But this just changes on the white papers. I mean, it's like theoretical. Uh, again, it, it's gonna be decided by the network. So you could make a proposal where you want 2.5 the guest, 2.5 the host. And if it passes, maybe just for a certain kind of bookings, then it passes. One thing I'd like to add, uh, when a transaction happens on the blockchain, you as a guest pay and you will see exactly how much money goes to the host of your money and how much goes to the platform. So it's not transparent, it's more than transparent. It's just like completely open. And that makes it much more trust trustworthy because we could say it's five and then have some hidden fees for the owner, etc. cetera. Um, but there's an elephant in the room <laughs> in, the term, in the fact that in the last month, not behind you. <laughs> uh, there's Bidroom. They they launched this uh, uh, membership plan where there's no commission, but both the guests, I guess, and maybe also the host pay a pay a fee, pay a fee to to be part of it, and then and then there's no commissions. Um, that could be a way for us too. Why not? What do you think, guys, about this? And I'm gonna go with David, who's next in line. Have you heard about this model? Membership uh, model? That, I mean, that sounds old school Verbo before when it was VRBO before. Uh, yeah, but the guest pays in their Verbo where, sure, because sure, um, yeah. you know, an, a whole nother listing option is you're paying an advertising fee, right? You're paying like a classified yeah. ad. You pay 400 bucks a year to be listed on a site. 
um, and that's your that's your membership fee. So seeing that from the guest perspective as well, uh, where they can if they are going to travel a lot and they yeah. they feel it's a better way to just pay a one-time fee than paying a commission for each booking. Um, I can see that working from the guest side too, once you have momentum and, and you know a guest is traveling a lot. Uh, but that's not really a new uh, thing from the property manager side. That's kind of been around for a while and, and has slowly been phased out to, to move towards the, um, the commission model um, as a way to get more properties on board by, from people who don't rent out throughout the year, they just rent out a little bit, so they don't want to pay, you know, a $500 fee, they just want to pay um, each time they get a booking. Well, the, the commission model, in my opinion, is, has been proven more efficient for the platform, because they could extract much more money than before. I remember HomeAway, they would charge you $300 a year, and if you wanted really to, you know, spend a lot, you had the platinum for 1000 or 1700 that was maximum. And today, with these 15% commissions, you easily spend on a normal apartment three, 4,000 a year. So, and with this money, you do marketing and they, they basically priced out the, the, uh, the old model. So HomeAway was forced to go on commission because they had not enough money for marketing. That's my reading, uh, maybe not true, but the, the new model, the membership model where the gas pays too, I, I've never seen it before, maybe it existed, and my only question is, uh, if you know that 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 sounds sustainable to me, does it? What do you think, Eric? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, what you're what you're talking about, uh, in my view, it becomes sort of a it's it's almost it becomes an opaque channel for you, right? Because you've got to have a membership potentially, right, or a login to to reach. You know, if you're a consumer paying, in addition to the supply side, and when I say supply side, I mean property manager, host, or you know, identify with a lot, you know, all of them. Um, but but that that does allow it does allow you to do some interesting things um, uh, because when you have an environment that you can control you can you can you, know, you can compel people uh, through different offers uh, that potentially won't compete with your your own up you know kind of open market uh, approach which is sort of you know the you know, kind of the open consumer uh, position and price but you know, sort of the, the ramp to, to get there is harder, right? Because then you're asking a consumer to do something that they're not programmed to do in today's Zcom world, typically, unless there's in, in some incentive, which it, it could very well be, right? Because it could be a lower cost, lower price point. Um, and, you know, it's, it's at the cost of an email address, potentially, or, you know, some sort of monetary cost. Um, so it, again, as David said, these, these models prevailed pretty heavily, you know, early on, I, you know, what, what old, you know, what's old is new again. You know, there, there's a lot of that going on. And, you know, uh, you know, I think there's, there's probably a place in the market for it, for sure. All right. We, we're going to have the, Michael. Sorry, go ahead, David. Yeah, the, the guests would need to do the math, right? How many trips a year do I need to make to make paying a membership worth it? So first, uh, maybe a first option would be to not have that in place so that guests are actually using it and seeing how many trips they're making. And then they'll realize the math makes it worth it to have a membership model uh, instead of the pay for booking. Yeah, I don't know how much they're charging, but uh, I guess that if one booking of $1,000 costs to the guest 150, it doesn't take too many bookings, I guess. Anyway, we're going to ask this to Michael Ross. We're going to have him together with Antonio Portolotti on a panel on a customer acquisition. So we're going to ask him how this works. But it's interesting. It keeps com coming back to my mind and as a possible option. Um, how, how would it be? Would, would you like it, Moria, just to pay a fixed amount and then forget about commissions? Or so maybe something hybrid with a very low commission and a membership yeah, fee. I, I believe to really, really go back only to membership, it uh, I'm afraid it's not going to work. Like uh, David uh, mentioned, now the, the guest will have to calculate how many times they're going to um, um, travel a year. Maybe it will work better for for the segment I'm representing because it can be done in uh, maybe in one booking. Uh, but still, uh, it's, it's very much depending on other things that the OTAs developed at the time from, from the time of HomeAway or the old VRBO, uh, which is more like the, the, the trust and safety and other things that encourage people uh, feel that uh, they can book and uh, they can feel safe 
uh, and they can pay only on success, success of, of the booking taking place and not something that will be happening maybe in the future. Especially now in time of COVID-19 is still the biggest elephant in the room. And uh, nobody knows how many times you're going to travel, where to, oh, yeah. where it will be possible, etc. Yeah. I would not start to go back to this model right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to admit, I'm thinking after because right now, whatever we're saying is, is not going to work. So we have a, a nice question, very direct from Pierre. And uh, it's, it's a hard question, so I'm going to pass it to you. <laughs> I'm not going to answer it. Or maybe I'm going to answer it at the, at the end. What do you think? He says, how can a 5% commission can be uh, sustainable if Airbnb is charging 14 or whatever is charging, charging uh, more because Airbnb is charging 12 plus three or plus six or 15 plus six. So I would say more than 14 and losing 350 millions per quarter. Anybody wants to answer this question? <laughs> Otherwise I'm forced to. <laughs> no, I mean, I think we, we talked about that early on is, is the viability of a 5% model, right? Yeah. Because you have to have money to market and really drive consumer demand. So that, that's, that is still remains the question. And, you know, and, and I, I guess experience will, will prove it <laughs> you know, one way or the other. Yeah, good, good reply. Anybody else wants to answer this? No, it's my turn then. Uh, no, actually, we don't know, Pierre, if it's sustainable. That's the whole point. Uh, we start from 5% and, and see if, if we manage to um, get enough marketing to get, to get customers. Now, of course, Airbnb is losing now because of COVID. So I wouldn't really, you know, not today, nothing is basically sustainable. Uh, in a post-COVID world where tourism comes back, probably in a different way, um, will 5% be enough? We don't know. We hope so because, um, yeah, he's adding that was before COVID-19. Yeah, last year is true. Um, so in general, Airbnb wasn't losing money in the, in the whole history. Uh, I would say that, it was a very successful business, except for last year. I guess last year they were investing more. That's why they were losing. Uh, not every time a, co a company loses money, it's actually not profitable. It's like Amazon has been losing money forever and now they own the world. So I would say the model of Airbnb with that kind of commission was, was working in general. And, um, and they were charging a lot, so 15%. Can a company or, or a project charge 5%? Uh, we don't know. We think it's possible uh, because the technology makes this possible. And um, basically because it's going to be much cheaper to market things once the, mar the supply side understands it. And I'm just going to answer this quickly. And this question will be answered much better in the customer acquisition panel. But in short, once the supply side decides that there's a better way and start closing calendars for certain dates and basically forcing the guests to say, if you want to book these dates, it's not going to happen on booking.com or Airbnb because it's too expensive. You need to do, to go to the alternatives, which could be direct bookings or it could be trips or it could be a hundred or a thousand different new booking portals which will come out from Web3, then it's going to be sustainable. So it's a long-term thing, but uh, our bet is that it's going to be sustainable. But I invite you to join the other um, panel where we're going to discuss this more, more, more closely. And thank you for your question, uh, Pierre. So um, we've got 10 minutes left. I think we covered uh, basically everything here. Um, do you have anything you would like to add, guys? Uh, well, it's interesting. One comment that you just made about uh, wanting to get a booking on a certain platform at a certain time, like around the holidays or something. Uh, we're, uh, well, I guess two, two things. One, we're seeing property managers having a more sophisticated, holistic view of just being distributed, you know, all of the above. They're not putting all their eggs in one basket. They are being listed on as many channels as possible and putting a lot more focus on their own direct site now uh, with the goal of each year getting more direct bookings as a percentage of their bookings than they had the year before. Uh, 
<clears throat> we're also seeing them not care, at, they're not as hung up on the commission, the more sophisticated ones, because as I mentioned earlier, they're just pricing accordingly. So if they have to pay two and a half percent, they'll price it at $102.50. Uh, if they need to, to pay 5%, they'll list it as $105 on, on that channel specific. So they're still making the same amount at the end of the day. Um, but going back to your, your comment, um, I think we're going to see more uh, sophisticated algorithms and property management software that allow you to list on different sites at different times and maybe have your property be available on, on Airbnb or on trips, but not on booking.com. Uh, and I'll give you two funny examples that are actually the opposite of each other. We have one client who says they don't want last minute bookings from booking.com because oftentimes they're fraudulent. So they're happy to get bookings way in advance from booking.com, but if it's last minute, they want their calendar to be blocked for that channel specifically. We have another client who wants as few booking.com reservations as possible. So they don't want reservations far in advance from booking.com and they only want last minute reservations. Because they cancel uh, often. Is that, is that the I, reason? Uh, yes. And um, they cancel and I think the fraud thing as well. So they just okay. don't want it to fill up their calendar because okay. there's going to be the cancellation. Oftentimes okay. there's payment issues where the payment doesn't go through and, and they have a hard time following up and collecting from that guest. Um, so there's a few different reasons. So having some more um, sophisticated um, ability to have your, your properties available on different sites at different times, I think uh, the market's heading that way. So, so we yeah. hostfully does this, right? Um, you were some, able to... In some regards, okay. we're working on adding more like AI that can get smarter to be live. Oh on one channel versus not live on the other. Uh, and that's, you, you don't see a lot of that right now. Either it's available or it's not. Is the demand um, for this kind of service growing as, as you think you mentioned? Uh, yes, especially now as okay. they're, you know, as they're looking to broaden their distribution channels, they're starting to think more about what exactly that means. You know, maybe far in advance, I only want to get direct bookings. And then last minute, I'm just going to open up to all my channels. Okay. Uh, so there's yeah. a few different strategies you can take with that. That's amazing because this is, this is something we were foreseeing and uh, we call them advanced calendars in which you would leave your dates open for trips because it's cheaper and close for Airbnb or booking until a certain point where if you exactly. still empty, you open to them. So priorities, right? And I'm very happy to see this is happening because it does make a lot of sense. Of course, the next thing people say when you say this, oh, but the algorithm is going to punish you. What do you think, Eric, when you do that? The, the algorithm is going to punish you as the... Oh, yeah, I mean, like, because you have less availability on booking or Airbnb, and the algorithm is going to punish your ranking. They're not going to come and hit you, but <laughs> it's going to punish your ranking. Yeah, I think it depends on, on how many suppliers you're using Right, because they also want to make sure that their their shelves still have supply, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, so this is balanced. Yeah, there's yeah. going to be a tipping point, but you know you got to start somewhere. I, I don't know if the I'm sure the algorithms will catch up with that sort of behavior, but eventually you know the, the masses will will uh, will decide. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a good point actually, because I was told I, I think uh, the first panel Vanessa was saying this thing Vanessa from Renters United. If you close your dates uh, too much, you, the, the algorithm punishes. And this is, of course, true. But at the same time, it's true what you're saying. Yes, but they want to have availabilities. So what they're probably going to try to do is to keep your, you know, they, they take your availabilities, but they're not going to push you too high, which makes sense for them. That's fair. Okay, that, that's amazing. That's another, well, I came to the conclusion that this is the only way we can have alternative channels when the guest has no choice. Because given the choice, they go for the easy one, which is the OTA. And uh, another interesting point from David, two years ago, I would say commission was the, like, trips is going to work because trip is cheaper. And uh, today, the commission is less important. The price of the platform is less important because the very important fact that I realized only last year, and I've been on this thing for three years, is that you will finally own your listing, you will own your reviews, and you will own your customers. 
this is much more important. Um, does any of you know anybody's been kind of the platform from the, the platforms like kicked out from Airbnb or stopped working with booking? Yeah. <laughs> Personally, have you heard people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. This is what do scary. You mean by, what do you mean by own your reviews? If you don't, oh, if that's you the amazing part. If you, you get a bad review, you can. No, have it no, no, that wouldn't be fair. No. Um, today, you have you've been working on, let's say, Airbnb for 10 years and you collected 1,000 reviews. This is pure gold. The problem is, this is not gold. This is an ETF. Like you have a piece of paper which says, this is your gold. But then, if, if they want to close your account, you lose everything. So imagine losing a thousand reviews or two thousand reviews. This is a disaster, but that's what happens. And uh, on the blockchain, so on Web3, what's coming, and it's not an exclusivity of, of trips. This is what's going to happen in the whole internet. This is the sovereign internet. You create a listing today on Airbnb. Uh, sorry, on um, on trips. You actually do it on Origin Protocol. These guys from Silicon Valley, and uh, sorry, from San Francisco you own the keys which control the listing it's on the blockchain it's not on trips so and then you get a review and the review is written by a guest the guest is the only person who can do something with the review trips cannot cancel this review ever so if you get a thousand reviews on trips and then trip says david you you did something wrong we don't want you in trips anymore and it's going to be voted out by the network um, you lose access to trips, you lose access to our customers, but you still keep your listing and you keep your review, your reviews. So actually you have one listing and one review, one, well, sorry, one listing with all the reviews attached and you give access to all the OTAs. But the, if the OTAs close, shut down or kick you out from them, you still have it. You see what I mean? Right. So you have an asset now, your reviews become an asset. And that changes everything. So this is more important than the commission itself, in my opinion, because uh, you're not working on somebody else's ground anymore. This is your own ground. You own it. And the OTAs are reduced to the role of sending you customers. I don't know if it does make sense. And uh, th th there's another comment from Pierre saying that for the reviews, it depends on if the OTA agree to this. And as they don't share the reviews or they're required to have a link if you copy them. Oh yeah, maybe I wasn't clear. I'm talking about reviews made on bookings, not through the OTA, like the bookings on trips in this case. So these are new reviews. Okay. Uh, while what Pierre is mentioning is, is kind of being addressed by these other company reviews. I don't know if you heard about them. They get the reviews, your reviews from Airbnb and you can use or, or booking on the other companies and you can use it on your own website and we're going to talk to to them too in another panel uh and well that's a big discussion to have but basically because we're talking about the commission in my opinion the commission is less important than it used to be because we realize that the real value is in the asset we're going to have ownership of our assets that's that, that changes completely so the, the proposition of an OTA is get bookings from me and get the customer and we own everything. You just get the customer and try to make money on this customer. And the proposition of Web3 is we send you a customer and you get the reviews and they are going to grow. Well, in a bad way, you've seen Black Mirror, this episode where you, are, you have reviews on your person. Kind of this, but not managed by a company is, is uh, um, well, that was a very bad example actually, but <laughs> basically the reviews are attached to a listing forever and they don't depend on, the, on, a, on a third party, which changes everything. Okay, um, it's, uh, it's seven o'clock, I mean, it's one hour, it's different times according to where you are. Uh, we are done, if you wanna add something, yeah, I mean, look, I I, uh, I I appreciate the invite to come in and kind of share the conversation. This is a this is a perfect example of why Richard and I are are you know kind of propping up uh, 
uh, Yes Consulting is, is to be able to bring the right kind of minds, insight and experience to conversations like this so we can try to get it right uh, versus getting it wrong. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity to come and, and talk with you all. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you, Moria. Uh, a lot of interesting ideas, uh, topic. I like the fact that uh, it's got a little bit of uh, brainstorming. We're talking about future and hopefully near future. And uh, I'm really hope that uh, we will have the chance to, to practice it for real. That's great. That's going to happen. Just a question of time. I guarantee you this. I promise you this. David, any final remarks? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. You know, our clients, as I said earlier, they're looking to broaden their distribution and really diversify. So having more options out there uh, and well, obviously with lower commissions uh, is very uh, attractive to them. So excited to see where things head here. Great. So um, I want to thank you, uh, Gianpaolo from Host B2B. Gianpaolo is taking care of, uh, of the panel technical aspect, is behind the scenes and uh, is making this possible. So thank you very much, Gianpaolo. I think he's, a, he's appearing now. And um, I want to invite you, there you are, Hi, Gianpaolo from Barcelona. I want to invite anybody, anybody to Monday's uh, panel, which is about listing approval. We are planning not to let anyone just get in and, and get bookings, but the network will approve each listing before it gets on the platform. And uh, we're going to have Chris Morgan from uh, IPRAC, which is a, a company which certifies listings. So it helps direct bookings, basically. It creates this trust, which normally is not there uh, when you get a direct booking. And Silvia Montini from Dormoa.com, which is an OTA specialized on the Italian guests. It was amazing to see how she managed to get bookings uh, by targeting a specific uh, demographic, which are people who are not really technical enough to book through Booking.com or Airbnb. They prefer to call somebody. And these people still exist and it's a big, you know, a big market. It was amazing to see. So, and she also uh, vets uh, the listings. So we're going to discuss about that. Uh, thank you very much. You want to see this video, you're going to find it on, on YouTube in from, from tomorrow. And guys, I really hope to see you somewhere in some conference, maybe next year. And good luck to everybody. Thank you very much, Luca. Bye. Bye-bye.